Pastor, you know, where's my fear? Where's my honor? And then later, in the book of Malachi, the last chapter, he says, the people got to the point where they were saying, it's vain to serve God. Could you imagine God's people saying that? And we, we, we know the world says it. Ah, what is God? Who is God? There's no God. It's vain to serve God. But when God's people say that, man, you know that they've really departed uh, from the Lord. But then it says, but they that fear the Lord gathered often one with another. Hey, sounds like what we're doing right now, isn't it? Yeah. And they that thought upon His name. You know, when you even think upon God, think upon His name, that's worship. That's worship to God. As I'm going about my day, sometimes I just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I mean, I say it verbally, out loud. Because I love Him. Right. You know? It's like when you're with your wife. You love your wife. You want to hug her and you want to be with her. and you, Or your husband. I mean, it's not something you just say one time and that's it. You're done. On your wedding day, hey, I love you. I'm not going to say anymore. You know? <laughs> we don't do that. I mean, that's just, that's just not the way that human beings... I don't know about me. I, don't, I can't do that. I don't know about you. <laughs> you might be able to do it. Maybe I'm speaking for you. <laughs> Uh, but he says, and they that thought upon his name, he says, uh, they're going to be my jewels. In that day when I string up my jewels. Yeah, man, what a, what a beautiful picture, you know. God has jewels. God has some real jewels. And, uh, and he's going to display them. You know, in, in Titus, he talks about adorning the doctrine of our God. You know, when he speaks to the, the older women teaching younger women, he speaks to the younger men being sober, he speaks to the older men being sober and vigilant and all these things. And he says that we might adorn the doctrine of God. You see, when we are walking in holiness, the fear of the Lord, we, we, are, we are making the gospel of God, we're adorning it. You know, we're making it beautiful. Not that it's not glorious as it is, but to the, to, to the Joe down the road who's never cracked a Bible, never prayed, never thought about God all of his life, he's seen an ornament. He's seen the gospel of God being decorated when we are walking as we should be, to be holy without blame before him in love. Blameless, right? Because you know, the world is watching us. They, they got their eyes on us. I was telling you uh, Wednesday about that guy I met at Farm Fresh, Ray. He was watching me. I didn't know it, but he was. And then when his day of visitation came, he said, I want what you got in your life. And I said, I can help you. You've come to the right place. Come here. Meet Jesus. Right? Meet Jesus. And so, uh, you know, our good works before men. So holiness, the fear of the Lord, and, and then that ushers in the glory of God. The glory of God manifest. It's in the glory of God that you're changed. When you behold His glory, you're changed. We are changed from glory to glory. To glory right? We're changed. And Wednesday I preached about Christians who are never changed. They go from the same old to the same old. <laughs> from the same old to the same old to the same old. Now they got good reasons. My dad, it's his fault. My mom, it's her fault. I mean, we like to place blame. I'm blaming Adam. You know, is, is Adam going to be the most unpopular person in heaven? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're, we're going to have a waiting line to speak to Paul, right? I mean, it's going to be a really long line to see Jesus. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's not like that. But anyway, don't you want to ask some of these old saints some questions? I do. Jonah, you've got to tell me what this is like. You know, what's it like being in the belly? Why were you such a knucklehead? Why are you so hard-headed? Why didn't you just obey God? The general said to me. How come you didn't, Dan? Oh. 
<laughs> the only difference between me and Jonah was God didn't swallow me with a whale. <laughs> but, but you see, he says in verse 4, I mean, um, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings. That means we as Christians, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, He's given us, He's given us power. He's given us authority in His name. So that we're not just a victim of our circumstances. You know, there's a, uh, there's a verse in Je uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, it's in both of them. But the verse says, Our fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever read that? Because basically, and you can read this in Ezekiel 18, I believe. This is where most of it's at. But this was a little proverb that uh, Solomon didn't start. Solomon didn't speak this one. But you know, they kind of came up with these little sayings. You know, how we do. We come up with these little sayings. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Is that in the Bible? Nope. It's not there. It does say about if you spare the rod, you hate your son. It does say that. But we get these little things. And it's funny, people say... God helps them to help themselves. No. no. Try to find that one in the concordance. It ain't happening. You know, we get these people, these little sayings. Well, Israelites had a saying. Our fathers have eaten sour grapes. Have you ever eaten a sour grape? It makes you want to kind of grit your teeth. Set on edge, right? The father have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Basically, what they were saying was, the reason we're in such sad shape is because our fathers, what our fathers have done wrong. Because they were sinners, that's the reason we're, we're, we're doing bad stuff. See, the fathers ate them, but the children were the ones who suffered. You know, theirs, theirs were the teeth on the edge. And so God says, I'm tired of this proverb. No more shall it be said. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Don't say it anymore. I don't want to hear that anymore. The soul that sins, it shall die. He says if a, if a man is righteous and he does righteous, and then he has a son and his son is a rascal who does wickedness, the son shall suffer for the sins. If a father is, is a rascal and he's a sinner, and he sins and he's lewd and, and it lists all these things, and he has a son, but the son follows righteousness, that son shall live. You see? So, the fathers cannot be blamed for the children. Now, we might say, I'll tell you something you could say, though, is you can learn some really bad habits from your fathers. You know, like I remember when I was a boy. I remember. When I was a boy, and it was me. <laughs> when I was a boy... <laughs> my brothers, my, my, my mom and dad both smoked. Terrible habit. And then my brothers started getting into it and they said, you're going to do it too. You know, you're going to do it. I said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. No, you're going to smoke because that's, that's just, we all do. You know, it's just part of the family tree here. Well, I just determined I wasn't going to do it. I thought it was disgusting. I thought it would be, be, be better to take your lips and wrap it around the tailpipe and have somebody grab the car gas a few times. I mean, that's what you're doing, right? Um, but on a smaller version. And I never did. But you see, the, the, the thought is, you're going to be this way because of the way you were born, you were raised, so on and so on. You know, I'm this way because it's in my genes. With a G. Those genes. I'm raised this way because I, I inherited it. Well, guess what, folks? We've all inherited sin. The sinful nature. We inherited that. And from there, everything else comes. So to say that you're this or you're that because you inherited it, well, you've inherited the sin nature. 